Hello, everybody. Welcome to the UK Packers podcast. As usual, I'm your host at NFL on Twitter, and of course, follow the group at UK Packers. And as usual, I'm joined by my old buddy, my old pal, aus Deutschland, Herr Peacock. Herr Peacock, wie geht's? That's very good. Yes, uh, very much so. It's uh, now, and I am coming to you live from Hamburg. Yeah, from the Bibliotheke or whatever. Yeah. So Ryan, you're in Germany. We've got ten minutes, bro, <laughs> to uh, yeah. do this game. How's the how's the, so? Here's a lie. I think this is the first time live you've been on the pod. You know, neck and beers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I got myself a beer because obviously it helps with the old acoustics. Let's say. But look, we're already wasting time here. We've only got 10 minutes, and we're not getting yeah. used to this, are we? No. We've got 10 minutes to talk Vikings. Are you ready? I'm ready. Is Aaron Rodgers ready? Aaron Rodgers will be ready. He said he's going to play. I know the planet Coy, but even Mike Zimmer came out and said that Aaron Rodgers walks on water. The Vikings know he's going to play. We know he's going to play. Mm. Um, he's, you know, he's going to be playing. Now, I guess the big question I've got for you uh, without any warning on prepod, well, is do you believe in Kirk Cousins? Is he the real deal? Yeah, I believe in Kirk Cousins. Yeah, and I tell you why. Because first off, I believed in him when he was with the Redskins, right? Now you're gonna get, you're gonna hit me with some emoji action. Um, I believed in him when he was with the Redskins, but now he has arguably the number one defense in the league. Now, if you look at the stats, right, the Packers defense is six. The Vikings defense is actually thirteenth based on stat wise, but that's due mm-hmm. to get better. They're strong. Yep. They're strong up front. Now I know you asked me about Kirk Cousins. I'm talking about the defense, but I'm just saying yep. this is the first time he's had kind of a number one defense. He has Stephon Diggs. And Adam Thielen, Adam Thielen had had over 100 yards last um, on the last games week. Uh, Kyle Rudolph is a weapon. He didn't really use him. Only one reception, mm-hmm. but that reception went for a touchdown. Um, yep. And as well as that, if you look at Kirk Cousins' stats, uh, he was always criticised in the red zone, but the chap seems to get it done when it matters. Zero mm-hmm. interceptions, so he's able to look after the ball. That's all they'll expect of him. If he can match Case Keenan's numbers from, you know, last season, that's all they really want him to do is be safe with yes. the football. Now, mm-hmm. what I will say about this game is, and this is where I'll end and, and throw it to you because I know we only have 10 minutes, right, is that this game will probably hopefully be, a, well, we'd want a Packers blowout, but it, it has all of the makings of a game that's going to be fairly tight. Um, Kirk Cousins has 12 game-winning fourth-quarter um, stretches in his career. That's 12 times in the fourth quarter in a tight game. He's came back and won it in that fourth quarter. So if they can keep this game close, He's certainly under pressure of the, you know, fully guaranteed contract and all the rest. Uh, this is a guy who can close it out and a finish here. He has his career high of 24.2 yards per attempt against the Packers in 2016. That's the highest of his career. So this guy has yes. waxed Green Bay before and he could do it again. Are you a believer or do you always go by the church of Aaron Godgers? Well, Aaron Godgers is, is, is in a, a camp of all of, all of his own, but let's mm-hmm. face it. Kirk Cousins, as much as Case Keenum did brilliantly last year, and you have to give him respect for that, and obviously he's earned a nice contract, I think, in Denver yeah. uh, on the back of it. Kirk Cousins, added to what the Vikings already have, uh, will be a dangerous QB. When you've got Diggs to throw to, Thielen to throw to, um, Kyle Rudolph, yes, you're right. They didn't use him much last week, but he's he's a, he's an absolute weapon on, the, mm-hmm. on offense. Um, plus, throw in there Dalvin Cook at running back. This offense is very, very strong. Mm. Uh, the NFC North, you're probably looking at the Vikings as being the strongest team on paper. No, oh, hold on, oh, whoa, hold on, hold on, whoa, hold on, no, there we go. Hit you with that. Hit you with yeah, that. I know, I know. And I, I, I hate saying it, and I'm normally the guy that ignores all stats and ignores everything there and says the mm. Packers are going to win, and I do believe they'll win. But what I'm saying is that everybody around the league, the people in the know, mm. uh, are saying that the Vikings are going to win this division. So week two is going to be a great barometer for... Uh, how how the NFC North is going to settle at the end of the season. Mm. Um, there, it's a huge challenge ahead for a number of reasons. Their defense is great. Their offense is great. Um, this is probably the most legitimate Vikings team uh, for many, many years that mm. the Packers are going to face. Yeah. Now, the one thing I will call into question, so I agree with all of that, and I do think that the Vikings, unfortunately, and it's annoying when you hear other podcasts call them the king of the North, but that's kind of what it is. Uh, thank you, Game of Thrones. Um but they are the class to beat. And as you said, Dalvin Cook is untested for us. We don't really know how you know we're going to face face him with his injury last season. Uh, he mm-hmm. was on track last season to just be an absolute phenom, a complete beast. And they have Latavius Murray at that position as well. And between the two of those guys, they had 84 yards last week. So, you know, they're, they're, and they're only going to get better, um, especially against the Packers defense, which 
I don't know, at times we got gouged by the run um, last week, um, was one thing I'll say. Now, the only thing I will say is this all is going to come down to scheming and game planning. Xavier Rhodes came out during the week and said that, uh, A, that they know Aaron Rodgers is playing, and B, they know he's going to figure out the defense. So what it all comes down to is them figuring out our offense. Now, w- let's just call it as it is. Aaron Rodgers is going to be immobile if he's playing. But the real question, Ryan, is is does that help us or hinder us? Now, I think that it's going to help us because the Vikings against Jimmy Garoppolo last week got that pressure up front uh, with that really stout um, defensive line. But I think that, you know, Aaron Rodgers, and here's the staff for ESPN, thank you, um, is that last week in the second quarter was the third fastest he got the ball out of his hands. So he's going to do more of the same. It's going to be that quick passing. Yeah. Now, another thing was is that, and again, we're on nearly six minutes now, so I'll, I'll let you oh, dive no. back in feet first. Um, and the thing is, is that uh, there's this stat apparently that came out, people are being fascinated by it, that the quicker Aaron Rodgers gets the ball out, you know, the, sh- he tends to, the distances tend to be shorter. Yeah, because he can run less distance in shorter periods of time. I don't know how that isn't common sense. But this is going to be a real dinky-dunk game, short yardage, keep Aaron Rodgers in the pocket, who's still deathly accurate. Uh, with very few sort of explosive big plays, and that's just going to yeah. be the nature of the game. Sure. I mean, yes, okay, I, I, get, I totally get what you're saying. The short stuff's going to work. But when we've got three receivers that have shown that they can take the ball long, you know, mm. don't, they, certainly if the Vikings want to try and push up on us and, and meet us at the line, then we've got three players that are going to, going to punish them for doing that. Yeah. I think one of the keys to this week will actually be our offensive line. Mm. Okay, we, we need to protect Rodgers, not only because of the injury, um, but because basically if Aaron Rodgers is on his feet, then he's the most dangerous quarterback that's ever played the game. Yeah. Um, the offensive line needs to go and prove something. Um, certainly the running game is probably going to have to do a little bit more. Mm. Um, if, if we switch it to defense, for example, and, and I want to talk to you about this, I was quite impressed with the D last week. Now, we already said on the last podcast, looking at last week's game, they only gave up 16 points yeah. themselves when they were on the field. Um, and... I think particularly the secondary looks good. Uh, the the defensive line, as as we knew, it, it was it was going to be strong, and it, I think it showed that. Mm. Kenny Clark looked like he was doing some great stuff up there, and I think he's really going to be a big factor in this game. Yeah. Um, now there's the pass rush uh, from, from the linebackers and probably the linebacking core as a whole. Mm. Martinez looked good. Mm. I think he's going to be an absolute stud on this defense. Uh, we know there was some criticism leveled at uh, Clay Matthews. And he's going to probably just <laughs> just just a bit, just a bit. Um, and he's probably going to need to sort of bounce back a little bit in this one. Mm. Um, you know, Reggie Gilbert could be a player I think that's going to going to maybe have something to say and maybe start trying to. Uh, you know, if anyone's going to lodge Clay, uh, dislodge Clay Matthews, yeah. it'll be a big feat. But maybe this guy can do it. We've seen talk this week of Clay Matthews being moved back to middle linebacker, mm. and certainly with the injury worries we got there. Um, with Oren Brooks, I don't think he's going to play this week. I think he's only just returned to training. Uh, and, and the other guys sort of that are backing up those positions are certainly inexperienced on the Packers. Mm. Um, so maybe, you know, if, if, if Green Bay could be bold and move him inside, I think you'll see you'll see uh, Clay Matthews probably, probably offer a bit more. And when you've got Reggie Gilbert there waiting just behind him, there's certainly no loss at this point. If anything, it's probably an improvement at the outside position. Yeah, I, I think we get found out either way. Um, I think in this game, this is the acid test for the rest of the season. If we do well here, now I know there's going to be an excuse in the fact that Aaron Rodgers is limited in his movement, um, but I do think that um, whatever happens here, we're going to be found out. Clay Matthews is going to be found out. Um, and yeah, let's see what happens. Now, if and this can happen this time, because when we're the underdogs against the Seahawks, we come out and we're blowing them out before we got destroyed. Um so I think that if we were to take a heavy lead in this, that nullifies their, their run threat into Alvin Cook and Latavius Murray, and then let's really see what Kirk Cousins can do. Um, so I'm sort of calling for a Packers win, just being the eternal optimist. We've only got maybe 40 seconds left, Rhino. How are you calling this game, the finish? Uh, this is going to be the, probably the tightest game of the season. I reckon it gets decided by a field goal. So mm-hmm. I reckon three points in either direction, maybe even less than that. Maybe something crazy happens and it's a safety, but it's going to be a hell of a tight game. But the Packers win. Yeah, absolutely. So really quick, we've got maybe 10 seconds left. Lions at San Francisco, Seahawks at Bears. Can you going to call those? 
uh, Bears will win and the San Francisco 49ers will win. Yeah, I don't agree with you there. Jimmy Garoppolo gets it done and the Bears just do enough against an absolutely dismal Seahawks team. But that's it for a 10-minute takedown. So from myself, at CDDNFL on Twitter, from at Ryan Peacock NFL on Twitter, it's goodbye for this week.